Are you Pisco the dead? You can see me? At last, Pisco is seen. Are you also dead, Ishiki? No. So you are Pisco the dead? I am Pisco, servant of the gods. I'm Lara. Lara. Nice name, Lara. You are not dead. Neither are you. Oh, but I am. As a child, I was to be sacrificed. I was brought to the mountain. The ritual was completed, but... But you survived. Only my body. I am dead to all my friends and family. I live by the offerings that are left for me. I met a boy who says Pisco stole his dice. Taki? He's the son of a very arrogant noble. He insisted we play a game. He lost. I don't have many things, but I won those dice fair and square. If you want, I'll play you for them. Do you want to play a game? What's the game? Talk to five people who have been cast out. Hear their wisdom and tell me why Taki lost, and I'll give you the dice. I can do that. Patoli is said to be one of the oldest games in America, played by all walks of life. Players were known to gamble all of their worldly possessions over a single round, from blankets and precious stones to their homes and even their family's freedom. The god of art and games, Makwal Shoktal, is considered an active participant in the game, responsible with bestowing offerings upon the winner. So much on the line for a simple game. Some things never do change. <laughs> How can these shapes be Incan when they look like airplanes? Oh, I see, they're insects of some sort. Archaeology is a very delicate field of study. You have to put yourself in the mindset of people and cultures who died centuries before you were even born. Humans interpret strange phenomena based on what they already know. If the Inca had seen planes, they might have assumed they were some sort of bird. Given that, these shapes may not be insects after all. Some of them look more like fish.
The protectors failed and are now doomed to recover what they lost. Hello, Peace Go sent me. Ah, did he? Did you say you were cast out for lying? No, Ishiki. I was cast out for telling the truth. That was my mistake. What happened? Should I say I've never seen an outsider? If no one believes the truth, it never happened. What outsiders? They dress in black and have strange weapons. They hide gold. I told the cult about the gold and the outsiders. They cast me out for lying. Lying? The gold was for them. One day, the cult will be exposed for its hypocrisy. So what do you do now? I lost everything, Ishiki. My position, power, reputation. But it took me losing all that to finally see. I had no purpose, no calling. And you found one? Yes. I serve the future by protecting the past. Queen Unuratu's line are the rightful rulers of Baititi, not the cult of Kukulkan. Everything I see, everything I hear, everything I know, now helps the rebellion. A worthy cause. I send people to steal the gold shipments the outsiders deliver from time to time. They never change the drop-off point. Sounds like you're making a difference in a lot of people's lives. Thank you for sharing. It was nice talking with you. You too, Ishiki. Hello. Hello, Ishiki. It's rare to see outsiders in this city. Pisco sent me to speak with you. Ah, Pisco. I like him. You've seen other outsiders? Only one. He was handsome, gentle, and kind. We were in love. But our love is forbidden. Outlawed by the cult of Kukulkan. That's awful. I'm sorry. I was sentenced to death. Tied to the cliffs and left to die. On the third day, I welcomed death. That's when he found me, the outsider. He freed me and treated my wounds. Who was he? I don't know his name. It's been many years, but I still hope to see him again. I often return to the cliffs near the condor nests and collect their feathers. They remind me of him. That's a remarkable story. Thank you for trusting me with it. Thank you for listening, Ishiki. This describes something nearby. Canals bring water to the arid parts of the village, and they washed me away.
Gotcha. Do kids don't authority where you come from, Ishiki? I think it's part of growing up, pushing boundaries. Are they in danger? No. The guards threatened, but when they were young, they threw rocks at guards too. Mm, impossible. I can't carry any more. Someone's taking this old walkie-talkie apart. Were they making an attempt at reverse engineering, I wonder? Hello. Are you one of the outcasts? Yes, Ishiki. I'm Chaska. I'm Lara. Pisco sent me. Pisco the dead? Sent you to me? Did you lose a game of Patoli? No. A boy Taki lost his dice. I'm trying to win them back for him. Pisco wanted me to talk to all those who've been cast out before he gives them back to me. I'm surprised he didn't try to play you for them. He is. Ah, well, all I can tell you is this. Like Pisco, I was cast out. I lost my job and my position. But not because of an accident, because of something I did and would do again. What happened? Do you have any children? No. Neither do I. I did not receive the blessing of Ishel. But for my mistress, I was the midwife for her three children. I loved them like they were my own, until I lost my position. What did you do? I'm a thief, Lara. What did you steal? A jade necklace. Why? The youngest, Kiara, she saw the necklace while visiting a friend. She took it. They were coming for her. They would have cast her out. She was an only child. I said I took it. My mistress took the necklace from me and threw it on the floor, breaking it. And cast me out instead. I'm so sorry. Don't be sad for me. I would do it again. Kiara's learned her lesson and she has a good life. As for me, I serve Ishel now through my weaving, the way my mother taught me. And my Kiara comes to visit me sometimes. Thank you for sharing that, Chaska. Kiara was lucky to have you. Be well, Ishiki. Unaratu approached the throne through the crowd. She walked beside it, but did not sit. Why do we continue to believe this lie? She asked the crowd. Kukul Khan controls this city, and I will no longer wear a smile and pretend it is any different. I will not be his puppet, trotted out to wave and smile. The guards cut her off quickly and ushered her away. Then they advanced, with weapons drawn to disperse the crowds. <laughs>
Have you come here to escape the bustle of the city? I swear, it gets louder and more crowded every day. The people are changing as well. They desire more and more, be it food or clothing or jewelry. Their eyes dart inside the homes of their neighbors, longing for the items they see. No one seems to be able to find contentment with what they have. It's too much. Sometimes I dream of sneaking away, just getting into one of these boats and paddling up the river. I would do that, but this place is all I've ever known. It would be a huge decision. I think I'll need to keep thinking about it. Thank you for listening. I feel as though a cloud has parted. Ishiki, would you like to hear a story? One that my mother used to tell. I would love to. You've noticed the pools throughout the city, haven't you? Do you know why they exist? No, why? We once had a queen, a very vain woman. She ordered these wells dug so that as she walked through the city, she could always see her reflection. One day, she knelt beside one of the pools, and a fish surfaced. She became very angry. The ripples in the water ruined her reflection. This queen tried to capture the fish, but she slipped and fell in and disappeared. Disappeared? Many tunnels between the whales were discovered during the search, but she was never found. Some say the queen is still down there, trying to catch that fish. Thank you. That was quite the story. Villager claims to have seen a strange creature in the streets. They followed it to a walled-in alley where it disappeared. Citizen describes similar experience in Upper City. Woke to discover something trying to climb in a second-story window. When she yelled, it dropped the street and disappeared. We'll continue to monitor. <laughs> Each Taka of the cult of Kukulkan vows to tie his coat to that of Yutu, descendant of the Maya. Lacking any family of his own, each Taka will live with the parents of Yutu until such time that they have built their own home and hearth. Yutu vows to tie her coat to that of each Taka. She will bear him many children, which they will raise according to the traditions of both their peoples. We leave the city at first light, which is just as well, for a terrible disease has spread across it. Dead and dying line the paths and choke the streams. Many are saying it is punishment from the gods. Journal of Adelantado Perez.
24th of November, 1603, I accompanied Andreas Lopez, a group of 12 soldiers and two molosses through the jungle. The directions the Jesuits provided to Trinity were excellent, so we discovered the hidden city with little difficulty. The natives of the city welcomed us warily, but we plied them with gifts, and they reluctantly allowed us to enter the city, unaware of our true intentions. Lopez has begun to search for the artifact while we distract the city's leaders. be the temple I saw from the riverbanks. Bats and Hoonchoen were twin brothers, older half-siblings of the more celebrated Maya hero twins. Jealous of their brothers, the monkey twins would always cheat during football matches and ruin them with their aggressive tactics. In retaliation, the hero twins lured them up a tree, a tree which never stopped growing, preventing Hoonbats and Hoonchoen from getting down. The hero twins convinced them that they could use their belts to climb down, but this turned out to be another trick and the belts became tails, turning the elder twins into monkeys. Turn mirror one to the left. Follow the beam of light to mirror two. Direct mirror two across the chamber diagonally. Return to mirror one. These seem to be instructions of some kind, but I can't make out the rest. must have arrived at the right time. It looks like the cultists were just here.
Only the worthy may call upon Kinichahal. Use his light to chase the shadows from your hearts in the city itself. Amazing. This must be where they perform rituals honoring the sun. 